Today we're delving deeper into lesson number three in our study of Second Peter. Now, Peter has given us a list of virtues that we could call the, the character qualities of Christ. To that list, uh, we added uh, in our last Delve Deeper a, a few more from other noted sources. Now, if you were able to walk those dusty roads of Palestine with Jesus, you would have noticed that all those lists, they describe him. And today, those lists serve as a guideline to for morality. Now, morality is a behavior that is in sync with God's design for humanity. Now, in a nation in which we can no longer get 10 people to agree on what's right, what's wrong, God's child needs guidelines to help him or her to discern fact from fiction. Now, you want to make a lifestyle choice? Okay. Is that choice supported by morality? Now, that's a good question to ask. As a believer, what you do is a louder word of your testimony than the scripture you're, you can recite, the doctrines you've got memorized, or the church that you go to. Jesus said that you know a tree by its fruit, and a good tree produces good fruit. And with all the things that clamor for our attention, temporal things that request our allegiance, and especially the preaching and teaching in the church, Believers have to discern if some behavior will produce good fruit. Now, none of the virtues are old-fashioned. They are a heavenly fashion, and boy, do they look good on you. Just because a culture says some behavior is now acceptable because we become, I don't know, more civilized, more tolerant, more woke, doesn't mean that that behavior is approved by God. In fact, the civilized, the tolerant, and the woke should look just like Jesus. While the virtues stand the test of time, they're applicable to every Christian. And you know what? If you follow them, if you build upon that foundation of faith with them, you'll not wander off the way to eternal life. So God bless you as you build those virtue lists upon that foundation.